And again, I don't want the Union Combat shit to come out yet. The next one is the Union Combat <laughs> shit. <laughs> All right, I shouldn't say things like that. I'm tempting fate. Hello and welcome back to My Own Worst Enemy. I am Mike Colello. I will be playing through this game against myself, as always, as normal. So, uh, if you remember last turn, we finished up turn number 11. It is now 8 a.m. We have remnants of McCullough's Division racing east to try to get to Elkhorn Tavern to hold on to at least Elkhorn Tavern and provide the Confederates with a minor victory. I don't, I can't remember if it's called a minor victory or, or <laughs> let's see, where is the rule book? Let's look. Uh, well, not the rule book. This is the special rules for, for P Ridge. So the level of victory, if they control one, is just a marginal victory. That's the word I'm looking for. It had an M in there. I was close. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Let's get this thing started. Uh, let's pull a chit and see what we get. It is that right wing division, blue seagull. So we have one down here who's going to stay in place. Now, if you remember last turn, I was hesitant in moving my pieces forward. I don't think I can do that now. Time is running out. We need to get an attack onto Elkhorn Tavern. We're all basically now. So I'm going to move, I'm going to move this unit forward. Just checking. I don't think there's any other of those right wing divisions we can we can move around. Um, no, there's that one, but like I said, the artillery is not going anywhere. So that is that. No, now watch me pull the Confederate combat <laughs> that, that would be bad, bad, bad right here. And we pull the Confederate combat shit. <laughs> okay, well, so this this is that was my fear last time. All right, well, let's, um, let's zoom in. Let's go ahead and zoom in. All right, now that we're all zoomed in, we know that we have, let's see, we have two, that's six. Two, well, let's see, six to four, and that is forest in there. So um, six to four would put us on the one to one, and there would be a shift because of the forest. Uh, it would push them back to one to two odds. And I'm going to have to say, that, you know what, the Confederates, well, let's look at their counterattack here for the Union. That's always important to look at in this game is the, you can attack, but the Defender's combat results table is pretty darn powerful in this game. So you've always got to look at that. So looking at uh, on the one to two column, the Defenders, basically they're going to get a hit and potentially a retreat here. So the crazy thing is it's, they're almost guaranteed to take at least a step loss, which would require a uh, morale check and a possible retreat. And they could even get a forced retreat here from combat. So, you know, I, I don't think they're going to, I don't think they're going to do it. I don't think it's smart to attack here because they're going to run the risk of being pushed out of Elkhorn Tavern. And that's, that is what they definitely do not want. So we're not going to, we're not going to have the Confederates attack here. So let's go ahead and zoom back out now to the big map. Yeah, all right. Yeah, that, that's, uh -uh, they don't want to do that. That, that would be crazy. They're going to try to hold on to Elkhorn Tavern. So they are not going to attack there. I mean, there's a chance I could have done something to that unit, but it's more important to hold that hex. So next chip. So it's the stragglers, McCullough's division. So they've got to be careful here. And again, they've already pulled the con their combat shit. So they might want to do sort of the same thing they did last time where they just kind of keep pushing up. Problem is though, uh, time is wasting here because there are, let's see, we have 12, then we only have three more turns after this. So this is really slowing down the Confederates advance to Elkhorn Tavern. They, uh, they stand a good chance of not even making it. And these are both brigades, so we could go, try to go around these units. We could go one, two, three, four. Um, or we could just keep pushing up the trail here. And we could also do something like one, two, three, four. Although, with that wooded hex there, I don't, there's not a trail, so they really couldn't do that. They could go one, two, three, four. Yeah, I think we're going to have... And this is, like I said, this is a strong stack, so 
one, two, three, four. So I'm going to have him go over to this, um, I think it's orchard. It looks like, or is it rough terrain? I mean, it says orchard right there, but I, I don't see a, I don't see the corresponding orchard terrain marker here. So anyway, one, two, three, four. Let's bring him up into the orchard. One, two, three, four. And this artillery can go one, two, three. And what's his defense value? A six. One, two, three. All right, we'll move him up there. I don't, it's, it's a pretty strong unit, so I don't feel too at risk from the Union unit here. So, or units, I should say. All right, so that's that. Back to the Chit Cup. Back to the Chit Cup, and we draw the Independence. So the reinforcement gets to come in. This artillery, we can move forward now. So that's good. And what we're trying to do is to get everybody to position before we draw that Union combat chip. This unit, that's not an independent, that's yellow. That's the other independent and then the cavalry. So now this one can come in and he's got a movement factor of four. So we could go, and this is, uh, this is a road, so it's a half. Um, one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, four. So we'll just bring this unit all the way forward to just outside of Union HQ. Not looking too good for the Confederates, I don't think. Like I said, the combat in this game is, is interesting, <laughs> to say the least. That is another McCullough's division. So let's draw another chip. I'm really hoping for the, uh, that brown Union division marker to come up. But we don't we get, we don't get it. We get the third division. That's Davis, which is also okay. I think that's here, and I think we left one behind here. We did. So it's the it's this stack. These two brigades. One, two, three, four. We get them all the way up to there, or we could try to maybe try to. We try to swing around and block these remnants from coming around. Maybe that's what we want to do. We could go one, two, or we could go one, two, three, four. That might be a bad idea. The question is, do we have enough units up here to take Elkhorn Tavern back? I think we do. One, two, three, four. And the problem is weak units I think it was a two attack. Yeah, they would have attack strength of two going against an attack strength of 11. So they wouldn't really be good at fighting that Confederate stack, but they could certainly, certainly cause a delay, which just might be what we want to do. Let's do that. We're gonna go one, two, three, four. So we're gonna end up here. And that is going to be it for, and I don't think, and that was an independent under here. We've already moved those, so everybody's already moved there. Yeah, so I think that's what we want to do. All right, back to the chip we'll come. And again, I don't want the Union Combat chip to come out yet. The next one is the Union Combat <laughs> chip. <laughs> All right, I shouldn't say things like that. I'm tempting fate. Well, so we have the same situation up here that we have an attack factor here of four, the defense is 12, so that's going to put us on the one to four column as the attacker, which as you can see wouldn't even hit you know, if we're on the one to four, but if you're the defender you're definitely going to hit. So we don't want to, we don't want to attack just yet. We could try, we could consider the automatic retreat. Uh, yeah, it's just not worth attacking yet. This is the problem with um, having that combat chip come out at the wrong time. So I'm just going to pull both of these units back. Automatic retreat. Yikes. All right. Um, was that it for... Uh, oh, that was the combat. Yeah. Oh, wait. We still have combat potential down here. And like I said, that was... Uh, it's an 11. So it's 2 to 11. It, same thing down here. We just... Not good enough. Stupid to attack. Well... 2 to, what did I say, 12, 11, 2 to 11, so not as horrible as odds, but still I would wind up taking, I'm, I'm thinking because it's more of a delaying tactic down here than anything else. 
Yeah, I think we still need to pull these guys back. Let's just pull them back this way. Put an automatic retreat up here. And now there's no more combat situations to deal with. Let's go back to the chip bull cup. And we pull the second division. That, it's really hard to read those chips. Uh, okay, so that's down here. So this, this, this one can move four. So you can go one, two, three, four. I don't think there are any more of those. Well, there's uh, one up here, but he's not going to go anywhere. Well, no, he's not going anywhere yet. We've already blown the chance again to, to force those troops out of Elkhorn Tavern. Well, let's just go and pull the next chit. It is the first division. So that is here and up here. No, I thought there was another one probably down here. Nope. This is just that one. First division is going to... I think it's going to stand right there. Again, we're trying to, to delay these Confederate units from coming around. So that's working, I think. Another chip. The fourth division. Uh, so these two are fourth division, and this one is fourth division. The combat... Both combat markers have come out now, so this might be the time to move these units forward. So we would move these two forward, and I think it's just going to be the one here for now, anyway. So that one comes. Oops! So that one comes forward. Da, da, da. I think that is it. Or that, uh, did we pull the yellow? Yeah, we've already pulled the um, second division here, so he's not going to move yet. That would have been nice to, to move him, though. Uh, what are we looking at here? The Missouri State Guard, that's the ones in Elkhorn Tavern. They're not going to move. They're all in now. All their chips are in. Missouri State Guard again. Nothing left in the cup. That's going to bring us to an end of turn number 12. All right, let's keep going. Let's, uh, let's advance the game turn marker up to 13. We will put all of these chips back into the cup. Time is running out. Three more turns, that is it. So right back in, let's go. Let's pull a chip. We get the independence for the union. So this is probably a good thing. We have this one can go one and a or one half one one and a half so we can get this one all the way forward with his attack value of two yeah two but where does he want to go let's see we could also bring him down here to try to I don't know if that's necessary though these guys get to move one, two, three, four, but I wouldn't be able to bring the artillery up. I could go here though. I'm just trying to look where I want to send this unit. It'd be nice to get him here. So I could go. I could go half, one and a half, two and a half, three and a half, but I don't want to do that. I could go one, two, three, four. The plan of moving him this way. Let's do that. Let's go one, two, three, uh, four. And any more independence? I thought there was. I think he's under here. Or is it here? So now I think I'm going to move this artillery piece forward. I think I want to do that now. And hopefully we will pull the... Uh, that right wing blue marker counter chip before the uh, combat chip comes out. And and the yellow one too. Alright, so let's see what we get. Back to the chip pool cup we get. And it is that yellow one. It's the second division. So that's good. Now we can bring this artillery can come up. Let's put them under here. So that artillery comes forward. And this guy, yeah, he's yellow, so one, two, one, two. Do I go one more forward? No, I'm going to hold him there. He's just kind of a, 
bringing up the rear, as they say. All right, so that's that. Back to the cup. I still hope to see that right wing chit come out. So let's see. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. All right, so the right wing. Now we're getting our troops into the line to, for attack like we wanted to. So that one's going to move up. Um, oops, I dragged the, the whole map around here. And then the other one, the other unit is down here. So that is it for the right wing. We're not going to, we don't have any others to move. So now the Union Combat chip marker can come out if it wants to. So let's dig in and we pull another Union chit. It is the uh, second division, third division, the green one. So that is back up here. And I honestly think I'm just going to move these. I think I'm going to move them back one to here. Again, with the intent, they're simply trying to keep these reinforcements out of Elkhorn Tavern. And no other ones need to move. All right. Back to the Chit Cup. Where we pull the... <laughs> Another Union ship. I, what is going on here with, this, with all these uh, pulling the Union ships in a row? This happened a turn or two ago. So we're, it's the, um, it is the, I can't even read this. I'm going blind. The Osterhaus, uh, first division, orange. I'm going to bring the orange unit. It's a movement factor of four, so it's one, two, three. We'll do that. No, 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 no other units to move that I want to move anyway. Um, we will pull another chit from the cup, and it is the Missouri State Guard. For the Confederates, they're not going to move, so we will pull another chit from the cup. And it is Missouri State Guard again. We will pull another chit, and it is the 4th Division for the Union. I don't think any movement is going to take place there either, because they're in position now. So. From the other fast turn, we will pull another chip, and it is McCullough's division. So, what is McCullough's division going to do? The way forward, they're just trying, we're trying to get to Elkhorn Tavern, but that's not looking so good. But I just noticed Union HQ is now wide open because I pulled these these forces up to uh, Elkhorn Tavern. So, one thing that the Confederates could do is make a run for Union HQ now. So, hmm, would they do that? Honestly, I think they just might because I think Elkhorn Tavern might be a lost cause up there. I don't know. So let's see. Let's look at this. They could go one, two, three, four. And the artillery could go one, two, three. So they could, they could certainly make a run for... Union HQ, but the Union could certainly react to that too because it's they, their, their forces are right there. So I don't know if it's worth it. So if it's not worth it to go to Union HQ, what are the chances of getting up to Elkhorn Tavern? This embankment is coming up. So they're almost forced into the embankment, which movement cost is a plus one to movement. What does note number two say? Cannot be entered or crossed by artillery or cavalry. So the artillery unit would be kind of stuck unless, yeah, there's just no way. Because this embankment, this is P Ridge. It goes all the way up around this way, it looks like. I don't, I don't think they could do that. These brigades could. It would, it's plus one to movement. It would just slow them down to get up there. So maybe they do make a run at Union HQ. Hmm, I don't know. I don't know. You know what? No, I think they're going to continue advancing. They haven't pulled their combat chit yet, so I think they're just going to keep coming up because they could, in theory, knock these Union units out of the way. So they could go one, two. They could come up here. And this artillery could go one, two, three. Let's go th three, because I, well, no, let's go here. Let's do that. Why not? They're in trouble and they know it. So the next chip out of the cup is 
the Confederate combat chip. Well, we have potential combat everywhere, it looks like. This is, this is going to be a problem for the Confederates because they either have to attack the Union now or retreat. I mean, every stack must be attacked rule. Looks like it's, they, we can't possibly attack every stack around Elkhorn Tavern. Uh, we're okay here. I don't, I don't know what they're going to do there, honestly. So let's see. This is probably the weakest stack with that. It is. I mean, here we're looking at a eight and a six, so it's probably in their best interest to attack these two stacks. Well, if they split the attack. And again, I'm not sure how the rule states that every enemy unit in a zone of control must be attacked, but here you can't because you only have two two counters and three stacks. So I don't know how that would I don't know how that would figure into this. I guess you just at this point it's a free-for-all. Or not a free-for-all, but I guess you would have to split the attack in two of the stacks and the other one just gets off scot-free. I don't know. That's kind of a I'm not sure what would happen there. Then the other thing is the um, the automatic retreat, but like I said, they don't want to get out of the Corn Tavern. So I think I think they're going to have to attack, and I think they're going to have to split the attack because of that attack every enemy unit in a zone control rule. So that's a defense of three and a defense of six, a defense of eight, and an attack of two, and an attack of six, or two and four as the case may be. And I think what we will do is have this artillery bombard this stack and this infantry attack this stack. And they are in the woods. Yeah, so it's a wood attack. It's going to be a shift to the left. It's going to be four versus three. So that's going to put them on the one to one column for the attacker. The woods will shift that to the left one and uh, they'll have to attack. So I'm not going to zoom in here. We'll just keep going with that. Uh, oh, I got to pick the morales. So with the Confederates, it has to be a minus one because that's what the artillery has. We will pick a, well, it's going to be plus one for the Union. Let's see what we get here. Four for the Union, five for the Confederate. That is actually a step loss on this Union unit, which I think he's already lost a step. No, he hasn't. So it's going to cause a step loss there. And we will check retreats in just a second. Let's go ahead and conduct the combat over here. So now we're at a minus one for the the um, the brigade, Confederate brigade. So we're at minus one and one or uh, zero for the Union. They are attacking into the woods. Those odds are what did I say? Six is their defense, not so it's two to six. Yikes. So it's on the one to three. And then the minus one. It's gonna put on the one to four, and that's gonna be bad. And we roll. And see, that's horrible for the Confederates. <laughs> they roll a one, that's a complete miss. The Union rolls a three. And I'm forgetting the morale to add the morales now. I think I might have done that last battle. Oh well, that's okay. So looking back, it should have been, so it's actually a zero for the uh, Confederates, and it is a three for the Union. Three for the Union is a two R. Yikes. Yikes for the Confederates. They're going to be pushed out of here anyway, I got a feeling. So it's two step losses in a, in a retreat. So yeah, that's... So the two step losses, I don't think either one of these have been hit yet. So we definitely have to take the first one off of the top unit. And he's going to have to retreat. And then another step loss is going to have to come off this artillery. So, um, 
so they do have to retreat. Well, let's do the mandatory retreat first for the Confederates. And this is just bad news for the Confederates, because and this is where this cavalry is coming in handy again, because this zone of control thing is is brutal. So they they're going to have to retreat. It's not going to matter. They're going to have to just retreat back this way. And so if we do the man, and I think that's going to cost them another step loss. Let's see. Yeah, so looking at the rules, that's uh, that's another step loss. And I think it's for each unit. Let's see. Yeah, each unit that must retreat and cannot do to retreat prohibitions must lose one step. So each unit, well, that's, that's horrible news for the Confederates because that means both of these units are eliminated. Because they both already suffered the one step loss, and now they're going to have to suffer another one trying to retreat. So, well, that's that's probably going to be the game. But let's let's see. So we still have this unit took a step loss, not a mandatory retreat, but now both of those units have to make a morale check to see if they retreat. So we'll start with that brigade on top. It's got to roll a um, four, five, or six. It gets a plus one because of morale. So he's fine. And then the artillery unit, uh, they got to roll a four, five, or six. Morale zero. Uh, so he's got to retreat. And... He can retreat into an empty... Well, actually, he can retreat into Elkhorn Tavern now because it's open, so that's going to flip. Well, let's see. I don't know if he, let's see, I don't know if he can do that or not because he, he's supposed to be retreating, and I don't think he would advance into... Although he kind of has to go that way, so I don't... I'm going to retreat him that way. Now that that's open, I don't know why he wouldn't... And that's going to get control of Elkhorn Tavern back to the Union. And there is more potential combat down here. This artillery's attack value is three. And so forth. One to one. It would be on the two to one. Or one to two, I should say. One to two if they decide to bombard that unit. And again, if they do, they stand a pretty good chance of taking a step loss and possibly retreat here. I gotta be careful because like I said, every it's an all or nothing with these mandatory or these automatic retreats. I think he's just gonna attack. Let's just attack. What the heck? He's going all in. So I said it's three to four, so one to one, uh, one to two. The morale for the Units are as listed because there's only one one unit in each hex. So let's see what we get. The Confederates roll a four, which is a complete miss. And the Union rolls a six. That's brutal. So that is two step losses in a mandatory retreat. Well, there goes that. <laughs> oh, gosh. Kaboom. And so the other combat is here. We are looking at three plus six is nine. They're actually on a hill. Uh, so they're at a, oops, they're at a three. They're at three, nine to three. So that would put them on the um, three to one, but they're on a hill. So that's going to shift a, a column to the left. So they're on the two to one. So they're going to fire. All right, let's pick our uh, morale value. So it's for the Union, it's, it's just zero. For the Confederates, it is, well, it's also zero. So zero, zero. Whatever you roll is what you get. What you roll is what you get. All right, so let's roll um, on the two to one column. Confederates roll a five, which should be pretty good. So that is a one R. And the Union rolls a three, which is... A one, so it's just a step loss. All right, so the one R for the um, Confederates. Let's do that. So it has to be this unit takes the step loss, which he's already taken a step loss. So it's going to eliminate that unit, and then a mandatory retreat for this artillery. So I'm just going to retreat him back to here with this unit. I don't think there's one. No, so he can go there because there's a friendly unit. 
and it's just one step loss on this Confederate stack, which he had already, this top one's already taken a hit. Oops, I should have picked the bottom one, the minus one, because he was full strength. So that's going to eliminate that Confederate unit. Pay attention is the moral of the story there. All right. Live and learn. So that is it for Confederate combat. And the Confederates have one unit on the board remaining. We pull the next chit. It is the Union combat marker. So this might be it. So now we can have this stack can attack. Let's see, that's four. And that is, I want to say that says nine. If I can, it is. Four to nine, gosh. So, and again, you're in an orchard, but it, it, there's no, I don't see an orchard over here, so I don't guess that counts for anything. I guess it's just an open, counts as open terrain. I think I saw it in the rules, but I can't remember. We're gonna call it open terrain. Not much of an orchard anyway. Um, so it'd be four, four to nine. So that's on the, um, um one to one no it's on the it's on the one to two because <laughs> the union's attacking so it would be on the one to two it's in the clear you're not going to get a column shift morale is let's pick then both of these have been hit so i'm going to pick a stronger one the plus one we want the plus one to our rule and the, and the confederates at minus one so the attack the Confederates roll a six. Where was that six earlier? They needed that earlier. So the Confederates roll a six, and let's see, start with the Union, because they were the attackers. Well, that's a complete miss, even with the plus one. The Confederates, however, get a two R, so that's going to be two step losses. So this one's gone, because he's already been hit. It had, this one's been hit too, right? Yep, so that just wipes out those two units. <laughs> All right, some deadly combat here towards the end of the game. That is going to do it for um, the Union combat phase. There's only one chit left in here. It's got to be a repeat. It is. It's the uh, McCullough's division, which is down to one unit, one brigade. That's all that remains. Has he been wounded? He has not taken a step loss. No. Okay, well, that is turn number... 13, we're going to keep going because I got a feeling this game's over anyway. Are we going to keep going? You know what? We're not, I don't... Yeah, let's go. Let's go. It's it's kind of a waste of time here. I think we can see who's going to win. I may or may not post this. I don't know. For completeness sake, we'll just do it. All the markers back into the cup. All right. Here we go. Turn number 14. It looks like a foregone conclusion as to how this is going to turn out. So let's go ahead and draw a chit. We'll probably draw a bunch of, uh, I thought we were going to draw a bunch of Confederate chits now that we have no Confederates to move. So let's bring the Independence now. The Cavalry feels like he's free to move, right? One, I can get him all the way down to, well, actually, you probably want to come behind here. So it'd be one, two, three, four, Five, six. So he's going to start working his way around. Well, he can't go up that hill, though, right? Yeah, he can go up the hill. I, I, I keep thinking about hills and uh, these uh, embankments. So he can definitely get up a hill. Uh, so one, two. Oh, that's Telegraph Road. I got to be careful. So one, one and a half, two, two and a half. Four and a half. Yeah, he can get to here. So let's just bring him down to here. There is another independent. Yeah, there it is, the artillery. I'm going to bring the artillery down here. And this unit can go one, two, three, four. That'll keep our divisions together, <laughs> which we weren't doing earlier. All right, let's pull another chip. We get, well, the Missouri State Guard, but they are long since gone. Another chip. 
is the Union, that's the yellow, the uh, second division, which is down here. So you can go one, two, three, and four. Let's just move them up. We're chasing them down. Not a very strong unit, but let's move them anyway. Is that it? Was there another yellow unit somewhere? I just moved those, so I don't know why I'm checking them. Yeah, there's this artillery, which could go one, or, or half, one, two, three. So we could do that. Let's bring this artillery unit here. Half, one, two, three. So you can get down to there. Might as well, might as well. All right. The next chip is the fourth division. That's here and here, so we can, let's move this guy into Elkhorn Tavern. He's so weak. These units can go, um, so this one can go half, one and a half. Let's just bring him down. Let's bring him down to here. And the artillery can go half, one and a half, two, three and a half. He can't go that way. He could go, we could bring him down to here. Or we could go, let's bring him into Elkhorn Tavern. Let's just go this way. All right. I feel like I'm just going through the motions now. <laughs> this game is over. Um, so there's the Union Combat ship marker. Let's see what happens here. This ought to be interesting. Maybe this will be the game. Um, only one play, so that's going to be four. We could join this guy on in there. We could, we could say five, five to uh, five to nine. So that's going to put him on the one to one. Just barely. This guy's in the open, so it's not going to shift. All right, so let's see. We're going to pick the plus one here. And that's a minus one for the Confederates. Let's see what we get. The, oh my God, the Union rolled abysmally there. <laughs> they, roll, they get nothing. They get absolutely nothing. The Confederates, who are now, now have decided to start the fight, roll a six, which is a two R, so two step loss and, and a uh, mandatory retreat. Well, we picked the plus one, so that's going to eliminate yet another unit. This unit, this artillery piece is going to be flipped. Um, well, <laughs> flipping it removes it. All right, well, then we don't have to worry about um, that artillery piece. So that was our two. Well, wait a minute, because I forgot. This is, let's not remove him just yet. Put him back. So this one was part of the attack, too, so we could flip him. He hasn't been hit yet, so let's do that. Let's just flip him. No, he... <laughs> <laughs> All right, who do you want to move, remove? The artillery piece? Or let's just remove the artillery piece. So we won't flip them. But he's still got to do a retreat. So he gets a... We're going to give him a mandatory retreat. And uh, because step losses were involved, he's got to pass a morale check or, or go another one. Looking for a four, five, or six. And he gets a one, so he's going to do yet another retreat. We'll just bring him back this way. That is it for Union... The Union Combat Marker. Let's pull another unit here, or another chit. The right wing division is this guy. He can go, is that mostly wooded? So he can go one, two, three, four. We've already pulled the, oh, let's just do it. Move him down here. We've already pulled the Union Combat Marker, but is there anybody else we can move? This guy? One, two, three. We'll just start bringing the artillery around. Why not? Let's get our buddy into this. Let's pull another chip. The third division is... Where did the third division go? I think the remnants... Actually, I think they were wiped out. <laughs> There's this one guy left down here, but he's just going to sit there. All right, we'll pull another chip from the cup. McCall's division. So he can move if he so chooses here. Um, I don't know why you wouldn't try to just run at this point. There's nothing you can do. You know what? So that's it. We're going to call it. We're going to call the game here.
it's there's no point in going on. Probably wasn't any point in going on as far as I did. That's going to bring us to a close of the Battle of Pea Ridge and Across Five Aprils. I'll give some concluding thoughts um, on both this and the Battle Hymn Pea Ridge when I do it. I don't think I'm going to go directly into playing Battle Hymn, the Battle of Pea Ridge yet. I think we've seen a lot of Pea Ridge over the last month or so. We may do something different between um, this this playthrough and, and that one, get a little more variety into the channel. Um, I don't know, we'll see, maybe I won't, but I, I think I will. It's just, that's a lot of Pea Ridge, so much Pea Ridge. There you go, I hope you enjoyed this playthrough of Across by Aprils. As always, thank you for watching. If you like what I do, please consider liking and subscribing, and I will see you back here next time.